Hello guys, welcome to another video of Material Simplified. Well, and this video aims to give the audience some info about what kind of questions can be asked in material science interviews or say nanotech interviews. Well, nanotech is highly progressive field. So obviously the questions that can be asked are, will be very highly dynamic, but then um, what I intend to do is just give you a brief idea of how these interviews are. So what I have here is around 10 or 11 basic questions which you need to know before attending any kind of interviews related to nanotech, be it master's level or PhDs. So let's look at some of the most probable interview questions that can be asked related to nanotechnology. Starting with the most classic of all questions what is nanotechnology yeah so if i had to answer that i would answer it in say this way like nanotechnology is study and control of phenomena and properties of materials whose size is below 100 nanometer also it deals with uh, designing characterization production and application of structures by controlled manipulation of size and shape at nano level such that we end up with at least one superior property. Why do we need to control shape and size at nano level? Well, because what we have observed is as we go down towards the nano level, say below this kind of a size barrier that size barrier is around 100 nanometers. What we observe is properties become size dependent when we go below 100 nanometer. So all these comes under nanotechnology. So if you want me to summarize in one line, well, it is design, characterization, production and applic application of nanomaterials or materials in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers. Moving on, our next question again, yeah, since you have mentioned nanomaterials, one of the cross questions that could be asked is, uh, what are nanomaterials? Well, nanomaterials can be defined in this way that uh, if a material has one or more dimension in the size of one to 100 nanometer, then the material is a nanomaterial. Okay, moving on. Again, yeah. So what you can see here is the next question is how do you synthesize them? So this is like a classic how the interview would go. If you say about nanotechnology, you mention about nanomaterials and once you mention nanomaterials, one of the most probable question that could be asked to you again is how do you synthesize them? Well, uh, two basic strategies are used to produce nanoparticles. One of them is top-down approach, another one is bottom-up approach. So what you can expect at this point is another cross question shooting up right to you. That is, what do you mean by top-down or bottom-up approach? Well, top-down in simpler terms, you can say as moving from top to bottom as bulk level to nano level. So for example, mechanical crushing of a source material using a milling process, say, uh, ball milling. So that is an example of top-down approach. Uh, if you look at bottom-up, well, we move from atomic level towards nano level. So this can be simply understood as like we are moving up from bottom and in top-down we are moving from top to down. Now again looking at the pattern you can predict the next question could be uh, what which among these is better top down or bottom up well there are a few differences which we need to consider if you look at top down approach what we can see is as we are moving down from top to bottom that is mechanical crushing or say ball milling so uh, there are high chances that the material may be contaminated because the particles from the balls may also become a part of the powder or you know, what you are breaking. 
also uniform distribution is not possible there will be a wide range of particles and when you look at bottom of approach since you are going or you are synthesizing from atomic level and moving up towards nano level you can actually control how these things are growing up so in that case your particle size distribution will be controllable and there won't be much variation so bottom up is more better you'll have all particles of identical size around identical obviously there will be some tolerances but mostly identical size the morphology will be same so yeah in this case bottom up is more better moving up okay yeah so how do you classify nanomaterials well what i have here is a basic classification which most of you might have heard as zero dimension one dimension and two dimension nanomaterials so, well this classification is based on the number of dimensions a material has outside nanoscale range again i'll repeat it this classification as zero dimension one dimension and two dimension is on the basis of how many dimensions a material has outside nanoscale range so if i say zero dimension what i mean is all my dimensions are within nanoscale and zero dimensions are outside nanoscale if i say one dimension what i mean is one dimension is outside nanoscale if i mean if i say two dimension my two dimensions are outside nanoscale so then they can ask you uh, some examples of nanomaterials like like can you name some examples of zero dimension one dimension or two dimension nanomaterials well uh, zero dimension you can say quantum dots one dimension nanotubes nano rods nano wires and in two dimension you can say nano films uh, graphene graphene is an example of two dimension yeah like these well yeah what is so special about nanomaterials so the mechanical rules that govern the bulk properties of materials often dramatically change when we are moving towards nanoscale dimensions well it can be understood as say take it as a size barrier below which what you can say is the quantiz quantization of energy for electrons and solid becomes relevant and because of this quantum effect the optical electrical magnetic behavior of materials change so this is special about nanomaterials like they have superior properties you can also say that the number of they have better uh, surface area to volume ratio as we move from uh, bulk to nano that makes the materials or the surface atoms highly active so my properties are enhanced as we move from bulk to nano and what i mentioned about quantum effect like because of this uh, because consider it as a size barrier below which quantum effect comes into picture and which alters your optical electrical and magnetic behavior of materials one of the examples of this if they ask you you can mention that uh, if you move to nano scale my copper which is opaque becomes transparent platinum which is inert generally becomes a catalyst there are chances that a stable material can turn combustible and insulators may convert into conductors the melting point of gold actually changes to somewhere around 300 or something i don't remember the values but yeah there is a drastic change in the melting point of gold so yeah when you move from as i mentioned before nano materials in nano range the properties are size dependent so this is what is special about nano materials what are meta materials okay so meta materials are artificially crafted composite materials that basically derive their properties from the internal microstructure rather than the chemical composition which is formed naturally 
so in simple terms if i want to explain it is like these are artificially crafted composite materials which have those properties which are not naturally found in general materials the main concept here is what we want to do is we want to tailor the properties we want to modify them according to our needs so we somehow develop a material in which the properties in which are very different from what is naturally found so these special class of materials are known as meta materials moving on what are nano clusters are nano particles and nano clusters same well uh, nano cluster is a common term which is used interchangeably with nano particles so in a way yeah you can say nano particles and nano clusters are same but what there's a very thin line of difference between nano particles and nano clusters well nano nano clusters are nothing but small agglomerates of atoms or molecules having their size in nanometer scale like single nanometer scale and these clusters these when they cross uh, like some values like single nanometer to double nanometers we can call them as nanoparticles or something so in a way it's like clusters of nano clusters like that nanoparticles are like that so moving on to the next one what are quantum dots as i mentioned before quantum dots are uh, zero dimension examples for zero dimension nano materials yeah one more quick fact these zero dimension nano materials are also known as nano particles now moving on to what are quantum dots well quantum dots are man made nano scale crystals which are used to transport electrons when a uv light hits these semiconducting nano particles so what they do is they can emit light of various colors uh, something like that yeah so there's these are used to alter optical properties yeah what is epitaxy epitaxy is uh, a growth of a single crystal over a substrate so there are two types of epitaxy one of them is homoepitaxy or uh, heteroepitaxy so we don't need to know that much but yeah it is something like you take a substrate and you want to grow a say crystal of a preferred orientation so that growing up of a preferred orientation crystal over a substrate is known as epitaxy if you want to say if you want to see the classification of this well yeah obviously that can be asked do you know about homoepitaxy and heteroepitaxy so it's nothing if whatever crystal you are growing on the substrate both are of same material it's homo if they are of different then it is hetero as simple as that so yeah again classic what are the applications of nanomaterials well nanomaterials find their applications in almost everything nowadays starting with food processing industries to self healing coating used in space applications starting with medicinal industry to electronic industries used as uh, thin films coatings they are also used as fillers in rubber industries mm, solar panels energy industry say solar panels fuel cells there are various applications any of them you can mention yeah now that's a very good question at the end what is nano toxicology well nanotoxicology as the name says nano and toxic so it's a separate discipline which what studies uh, it studies about the effect of nanomaterials on like humans animals and different species so what effect these nano particles on these nano materials will have on human like whether they are toxic or not and studies have shown yeah they are toxic like for example one of the most toxic nanomaterial nanoparticles what we have as of now is uh, carbon black so what happens is when they enter your body somehow then they can over a period of time accumulate and cause blockages cause chain reactions and so on so what about these we deal next nano toxicology so yeah these are some 11 
questions what we need to know before attending any nano tech interviews be it ms be it mtech or phd or you have mentioned nanotechnology as your area of interest so i guess uh, this would help thank you guys if you like it please share